Okay, last class we went over conditional proofs. Um, and this is going to be an easy one to do, but I want to use this uh, to illustrate just the form, what you do, especially on the web tutor for conditional proofs and uh, a couple things to look out for. So let's get into it. The first thing that you look for, why are we going to do a conditional proof on this one? Well, the main reason is because I look at the conclusion and it's a conditional. And so conditional proofs come in handy when you have a conditional for your conclusion. This is saying if A, then B and C. And so what we want to do is assume the antecedent on the left side. Assume A. If A, that's what that means. Assume A is true. Then we want to get B and C. And if we assume this and get this, then we can put down the conditional and justify our proof um, by CP, the conditional proof. Uh, sometimes you might see the conditional in an equivalent form, uh, like not P or Q. That's the same thing as, that's equivalent to uh, if P then Q. So look out for that too. And um, there are occasions when you might wanna do a conditional proof uh, where the conditional isn't the conclusion, but right now I wanna get into the basics and just illustrate how you do it on WebTutor and the general ideas. All right, so for this one, let's put our conclusion down here. If A, then parentheses B and C. And we know that we are going to prove this by CP. We don't know yet which lines we're gonna use because we don't know the number of lines. Uh, we do know that it's going to be actually starting in uh, line three because we're going to assume right away. So let's say three to something. That'll just be a placeholder, three to something, and conditional proof. That's what that means. All right, so for WebTutor, if you were doing this, this on paper, it would be uh, different, obviously. But for WebTutor, what you're going to do is you're going to indicate an assumption. Remember, the first thing we want to do is assume this, and then we want to get that. All right, so you indicate the assumption by the uh, vertical line. That should be right under your delete key on the keyboard. Vertical line, this is the third line. And that vertical line tells WebTutor, this is going to be starting my uh, conditional proof, starting the assumption. All right, so I'm going to assume A. And so I put down A, and then for my uh, not really a justification. My reason is going to say assume. I'm just going to be assuming that. All right. Because remember what we're doing is if this, we want to get that. And that's what the conclusion means. All right. So if A is true, if I assume it to be true, what can I get from that? All right. So on each of the lines under this assumption, uh, we have to put a vertical bar to let WebTutor know we're still under that assumption. All right, so we're still just assuming that. And so for our next line, let's think through how we might do this. All right, so you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put uh, the consequent right above our conclusion. So we know, we don't know what number it is, but we know that we want to get B and C all right, so right now I'm setting things up. All right, I set it up in a way where the conclusion is going to be the last line, the consequent is going to be the second to last line, um, and then we're going to assume the antecedent. All right, um, so this should be familiar from the last class, but again, just going over the principles uh, assume the antecedent, the second to last line is going to be the consequent in proofs like this. And then the last line is obviously going to be the conclusion as it always is. Okay, so we want to get to B and C, and we're assuming A. So the reason this is pretty easy is if we have A, then we get B. And again, if we have A, then we get C. So if we get B and C separately, we can combine them and get B and C. So that's the strategy that I'm looking at for the proof. That's what makes it pretty easy. We have A, so on the very next line, let's just get that first part of this penultimate conclusion here. And through one and three, we get B. All right, so let me put that down. So we used one and three, and 
we did modus ponens on that. If A then B, well, we have A, so we get B. That's what that is. All right. Next, right, I'm still in this assumption. So there's my vertical bar for the next line, five. And if I have A and I have if A then C, then I can get C. So let's get that C. And then I use two and three. And same rule, modus ponens. All right, so again, just to go over it, I have A, I have if A then C, so I can get C using modus ponens, good. Okay, and now that I have B and C, that makes this next line very easy. I'm still under the assumption, so I need to put that vertical bar. This is my sixth line, and now I can just get that B and C right there from four and five, four and five, and what rule did I use? I used conjunction. There it is, and remember, if you want reminders on the rules, here they are, right? There's conjunct conjunction right there. If I get P and then another line, I get Q, then I can get B and P and Q. That's what we did. Okay, so here's how it went. We assumed A, we got B and C, right? We assumed A, if A, then B and C. So this is gonna be our last line under that assumption. And so for the next line, we do not put a vertical bar because this is the last line of these, of uh, the, the lines that we got from our initial assumption here. So our last line, seven, is going to be not under this assumption. We already did that. This is basically the whole conditional. Think of this as the conditional. If A, then through a series of steps, we get B and C. And that was from three to six. And we use conditional proof CP. And let's see if that checks out. Yep, it does. Got the congratulations. And that's how you do that. So remember how you set this up. Um, it's gonna be the same for conditional proofs of this kind where you see a conditional in the conclusion. You set it up that way and we'll get more complex ones, but I wanted to show you the basics of how to do it.